This video is about the hidden and advanced features inside of the Curves window in the Quick Edit mode and also in the Pro Quick Edit mode. You can go into the Power Curves, which basically the Power Curves is really a lot more powerful than the Curves inside of the Quick Edit mode. But you also might want to use them differently. When you use the Curves inside of the Power Curves, you can do lots of things. You can have a, a chroma, uh, which is really just a saturation curve, and then you can have any number of color spaces that you're using and so the power curves is very powerful you can you can mask inside of here as you can in the quick edit mode and you can do all sorts of things and if you're familiar with curves you already know how useful curves are and the power curves can really do a lot more than traditional curves with all of the things embedded in there but in the quick edit mode which has all of these functions with the shadows and low tone contrast and, and so forth. The question is why would you want to use the curves? And the answer is, is because there's a lot of embedded hidden features inside of the curves. As you can see, the uh, curves control is the same uh, basic control as you have in the power curves where you can rapidly select the individual channels. As you can see, I don't have to switch to red, green, and blue. I can. So if they're overlapping, for example, I can I can switch to the red channel if I need to, but in general I can just really grab these guys very quickly and I can also resize the box if I want uh, a better view. And I also have the, the different modes for, for the curves. This helps stay away from the shadows a bit. Um, so when I have curves like this, I can keep above the shadows and then do all sorts of different types of curves, just like I can with the power curves. But that's where it starts to get very different. Even though I just said that the power curves are more powerful, and, and they are because you can have multiple color spaces, you can play with a different, uh, uh, you can have a different chroma channel, which, which uh, helps with the saturation, since when you play with curves, it can change things, and so forth. The, there are some advanced features in the quick edit mode and the pro quick edit mode curves where uh, that aren't available in the power curves for various reasons because of the way the quick edit mode works. And one of those is that, let's say I want to do some color toning. That, with normal curves, which you can you can click the keep luminous, which is default, but you can unclick it, which makes them more like uh, regular curves. Where when I tone the image and I start to bring the curves down, you can see it really brings down the light, which in this particular case looks nice. But that's not necessarily what I want to do all the time. If I click the keep luminous, which again is the default, you can see that it starts to keep the light level the same, so that they really turn into more uh, of color toning curves. And because they don't affect the light. And so you can see, here's a really good example. If I have all of these curves set, and I click the change, unchanged, well, I get, let me put these guys back, and I click the unchanged, you can see that when I move these curves, and that's all I'm doing, I had some settings set before in, in the uh, control panel, that it's keeping track of the light, and so I get basically the same image because it's balancing the light as I go, which really makes it nice because what I can do, that means that I can set these controls and instead of saying, okay, I want to get rid of some green and I want to get rid of some red and having it really drop the light where it would with normal curves, since, it keep, since it's keeping the luminance, it really just turns into color toning curves so that what I can do is if I want to get rid of some green, this picture's having the green, I can get rid of the green and not worry about how the light's changing because it's really only changing the color. One of the one of the reasons the the curves in the quick edit mode and the pro quick edit mode were added, as opposed to just leaving them in the power curves, is not only the accessibility where you can change a lot of uh, settings in here and then use the curves to augment your result, but also a lot of people are more comfortable with curves if if you've done a lot of Adobe Photoshop and that sort of thing. But there's also some other things going on with the curves. For example, if I want to go in here and set a color, uh, remove a color cast, I can do that. I can click on areas and, and tell the uh, tell stage like which area is is white or close to white, and then I can also change the result to get what I like. And but you can see I can't really see what's going on with the curves. I can set the levels and I can uh, do a whole lot of things in here. I can do the same thing with the curves window in the quick edit mode where what I can do is under options there are a whole number of options where I can do exactly the same thing I just did but with more control. I can click set gray point and what I can do is you can see I can click on here and it set the gray point for me but now I have complete control. So if it went outside of the 
range where it's hurting the highlights, I can adjust it or I can bring the highlights up and I can change the result. If I want a little bit more red, I can change the red, for example. And then what I can do is I can take the result and then add some more toning to it. And so you can see that I did exactly the same thing I did with the remove color cast, but with much more control. Another feature of the curves in the quick edit mode and pro quick edit mode is that I can replicate the auto levels and auto color. For example, when I come in here, you can see that it does an auto levels and adds a little bit of contrast, but it also has this yield sign up, which is telling me that it's protected this area. So it saves like wanted to do more. Uh, in terms of auto balancing and clipping, but it couldn't because it saw that this area right here is about to blow out. And so it basically said, I'm going to stop short of blowing that out and let you handle the rest, which I can do with the exposure if I want to. But I, I do want to be careful of this, this wing area because it is going to blow out. And that's a central piece of the picture. And so I can use all these different algorithms to get the best picture I want. Like this goes a little bit blue. Maybe I want to blend it with the original to get something a little more balanced not quite so greenish, that sort of thing. And so I can do all sorts of things. Now with the power curves, what I can do is I can do the same algorithms. I can do auto levels and auto color, which you can see looks about the same as the algorithm applied in the um, auto balance. And I can do auto, just, just the auto levels and I can do auto levels that uh, is looks at it monochromatically where it's uh, just adjusting the levels passively, so which can often help your image. So I can do that in addition to the gray point. I can also do what's called a gray world, which just finds the neutral tone for the image. And so you can see it sets all of these curves. And what I can do is I can change these curves. The nice thing about this is not only do I have all of the algorithms I had in the auto balance plus the gray world algorithm, but I also have control over the result. In the pro quick edit mode, let me transfer to that you can do all sorts of other things. The curves are basically the same and as in the quick edit mode you can see the uh, histogram window moving in uh, directly with the movement of the, of the curves. And what I can do in the pro quick edit mode is I can go into different modes and uh, different color spaces. I can go into the lab space. You can see that now I'm in CIE lab space and that I'm looking at the lab channels. Uh, it looks like they're mislabeled on the histogram window but uh, we're looking at LAB channels. It's a uh, lab L, A, and B right there. And what I can do is I can move just the lab channel so you can see that it's just changing the, the light. And uh, I can also change the A channel and the B channel, which really can be interesting depending on, on what you're wanting to do. If you're familiar with the lab mode, then this can be very useful. And as you know, that if the, I, I can just click the center here and uh, do things like add contrast to specific channels or or uh, add saturation in, in very specific ways. I can also use the other controls in, in lab mode. I'm on the, so I'm changing the L channel underneath all of this stuff, which gives really interesting effects. But I can also go into the HSO mode, where now I'm looking at the hue. You can see that moving, uh, which is nice because what I can do is I can really change the hue around on this image and do all sorts of interesting things with it. Um, and so you can see that, uh, that I can really change the hue around, but I can also change the saturation channel separately, which can be a nice thing because the saturation channel on the HSL and the HSL color space can be really powerful. So if I reset everything and I just use the saturation, you can see that you can really get a deep saturation with the HSO mode, unlike any other mode. As with the quick edit mode, I can also use these other controls where I can shift the hue directly and the saturation directly and then use the curves to augment the result. And so if I want to, say, turn this into, uh, say, more of a blue, then I can go ahead and change the result as well. So that makes it very easy and also very powerful to use. And similarly with the lab mode, I can um, do a lot of work with the hue and the saturation and then change either just the L result or also augment the A and the B channel. So that is an overview of uh, some of the more advanced features inside of the uh, curves windows in the Pro Quick Edit mode and the Quick Edit mode in Sage Light. Uh, thanks for listening.